everybody. Good morning, everybody on YouTube and Twitch. Subscribe to us on YouTube and Twitch. Just search us on 95.7 The Game. Like us, love us, dislike us if you like. Uh, we appreciate the audience there on YouTube and Twitch. And as well as a Comcast business text line, we do not forget about you and your text. Um, we love you. 888-957-9570. Is anybody else fatigued about this Jimmy Garoppolo situation? What is the best case scenario moving forward with Jimmy Garoppolo? Is it as a backup? Do you just cut him right now? I, I'm sick of talking about well, number 10. Well, that's why I want to ask you right now. And it's something that you and I have talked offline about. And I just want your opinions on air for the audience that's listening now. What do you think the 49ers are trying to accomplish right now? Like right now, we can say, oh, they're trying to get a trade. They're trying to get a trade. What do you really think they're trying to accomplish right now? I don't know the answer, but this is the thought I had yesterday. Okay. When I when I heard Shedahan and I showed you the video of Shedahan yeah. uh, at the podium. Hilarious. I'm almost, I almost feel like the Niners are sticking it to Donnie and Jimmy Garoppolo for all the games they've played. The stuff that happened after the Tennessee game where Jimmy says he's hurt, right? And then you heard the rumors swirling that Jimmy may not play another game with the 49ers, blah, blah, blah. Then he comes back for the Rams game, and he plays. And then what happened at the end where <clears throat> Shanahan and uh, John Lynch are sitting there at the end of the season presser and saying, yeah, you know, we're, we got to figure out with Jimmy. He's made it tough. On us, and you know, we don't know if we want to trade up, blah blah blah. And then Jimmy comes out and basically, he's like, Yeah, it's been real, deuces, right? Just basically, mm -hmm. they were just not on the same page whatsoever. See and then it. he gets the surgery where he knows the Niners are actively trying to trade him, and he has his surgery. And a lot of people thought, Oh, you can still trade Jimmy. And I'm thinking to myself, Nobody's going to trade for him when he can't even throw a football until July. Yeah. So he's going to miss OTAs, all the mini camps. He's not going to be able to build a rapport with any white receiver. And so for all the games that Don Yee and Jimmy has quote-unquote played, I almost feel like the Niners are sticking it to him saying, we're not allowing you to go to a team until the season starts. And then you're going to have to catch up. And especially if you go to Seattle, you're not going to be able to learn that playbook right away. So I, that's the thought I had in my head so yesterday. Spite. In spite, we're going to just keep you on the team. Huh. Yeah, I don't, that feels pretty diabolical, doesn't it? It feels crazy. I'm not saying that that's yeah. what they're doing. I'm saying that to me that feels pretty pretty petty too as well. I mean, at the end of the day, if it's strictly to keep him from going to Seattle for football reasons, right? I guess I understand that. It. it makes sense though, right? A team within your division, yeah. they're having a quarterback competition. You know you're going to play the Seattle Seahawks in week number two. And they're saying, you know what, Jimmy? We know Seattle's going to pounce all over you. But then how come we use this rhetoric? And I'm not saying right or wrong, but I hear this a lot from people covering all sports. Well, potential free agents and potential players that would play for you are going to look back at this particular circumstance and say, look how you did Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. Do you think that, that – because that's why – I just have a hard time thinking that John Lynch, who played in the league, is that diabolical right. where he's like, I'm going to screw this guy's over. Because there is an element of business, I think, yeah. that everyone in the room understands. Well, I, I really think that they're just clinging to something, praying they get an asset. And I really honestly believe at face value – and I know this is hard for people to – at face value, I think that they're trying to get – anything yeah. for Jimmy Garoppolo right now. And I think they're not going to get anything, especially with that price tag, right? They're going to have to eat money. Are the Niners, do they want to eat money on a player they're not going to have? Well, that's what Baker you know, and, and Cleveland had to, they have to, to do. do. And the Niners are saying, we're not going to run our business. We're going to do what's best for us. So I think at the end of the day, it's a business. And you got to do the best strategy for your team. So if he does go to Seattle and he gets cut August 30th, well, man, Jimmy's only got 11 days and master that playbook and get reps and build a rapport with DK and Tyler Lockett and try to throw to those wide receivers. I, I don't know, man. I think the Niners have to do what's best for them. Now, do I think it's that deep? Probably not, right? Yeah, Probably that, that's not. what I'm saying. Probably that feels not. very... They want to do right by the player. But yeah. that, I'm not going to lie to you, Shasky. Yesterday, that thought yeah, popped yeah. up into my head where I'm thinking, well, maybe they're just maybe it's a bit of gamesmanship. Maybe it's been a game since shit. They tried to play ball with Jimmy. Jimmy at his end of season presser yeah, yeah. did not really play ball. Remember the contracts yeah. in those pressers yeah. where they're like, you know, we may try to hold on to him, blah, blah, blah. And Jimmy's like, yeah, it's it's been real. Well, it feels like they've lost all that leverage. Let, let me ask you this, because there are certain times in my life where I've had to accept something that was a short-term uh, loss for the long-term gain. Like, there's there's certain compromises, and sometimes in life, something costs you to just move forward, right? Like, there's, right. there's a cost associated just moving forward. Right. For example, you've got this vehicle, and the vehicle's only worth $5,000, and you got two or $3,000 worth of damage to the vehicle, and you're like, you know what? 
I know I really, really, really need this vehicle, but I'm ready to just move on. Right. And I'll just have to buy, and it's going to cost me way more. I'm just going to have to right, buy right, a right. brand new vehicle, even though I don't even have the resources right. to do it. I, I just, I got to take the short term loss to have the long term gain and the stability. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is one of those situations where it's like, I get it. You don't want him to go to Seattle. Just worry about yourself. Right. Like, you can't control what's going to happen outside. Once right. you've made the decision to move off player, you know, we're not talking about Montana. Right, like, right, right, he, right, right, he, right. He right, has right. a legacy with he the does. Niners. I'm not trying to diminish him. He's been a good him, Niner. But if you could allow Ronnie Lott to go to the Raiders, if you can allow Roger Craig to move on. But this is a team within your division. This is a team, with, and this is your rival. It may not be the rival that it once was with Russell Wilson and Richard Sherman and Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas. But this is your rival. But once you've decided to move off and, and break up, you can't play the, you can't date that guy. You right. can't date that guy. No, I think you hold on to him as long as possible. And then when you have to make that decision on August okay. 30th, you make that decision. It's like, all right, now they have to play catch up. Seattle has to redo their quarterback room. They got to, and then you play them in week two and you're like, we know this guy. We know what he's capable of doing. I don't even believe Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be at full strength in week one. I know there's rumors out there that says he could play week one if he had to. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I, I think it's I smart know. for the Niners to hold on to him at this point. You know, you don't have to be in a rush. Nobody's obviously going to give you a draft pick for him. Think about all the teams we've connected the dots with Jimmy Garoppolo. All those teams have laughed at us. Laughed. Well, they, they, this is what they're thinking. And I think it's not so much like, hey, trade a X draft pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. They're doing the math this way. Well, you guys are going to cut him if I don't give you a draft pick. And right. I can get him for significantly cheaper. Exactly. Why would I pay for anything more than I have to exactly. if I'm one of these NFL teams that's not super, super desperate. Yep. And they don't value him that way. I just think it's wild to me that somebody with all of the stuff over their head that right. Deshaun Watson has... There were like 13 teams knocking down the door to get him. It oh. just shows you how talented he yeah, is. no doubt. And Jimmy Garoppolo, even though he's nowhere near the player that Deshaun is, doesn't come with any of that kind of baggage. Well, again, the surgery hurt him. You think that's, that's oh, the number I think that, one thing? As soon as it happened, remember it's Shasky? It's not the play. Sh Shasky, as soon as, we, as soon as that happened, remember we had the discussion, yeah. and you know we talked to everybody, whether it was Willard, Tibbs, everybody we talked to, mm -hmm. well, I think Cleveland's going to be a destination, or I think, you know, a place like Carolina. I did think Cleveland you know, was a destination. Or the Jets, and I was just thinking to myself, well, one, he can't throw. In that weather in Cleveland, yeah. where it gets really cold, you want Jimmy Garoppolo throwing up? He can't throw at Levi Stadium yeah, in, in, in January. And then he's going to go to blustery uh, Pittsburgh Cleveland? and Baltimore on the in road. Cincinnati? Yeah. And he's going to throw one. the football? That's tough. So once he had the surgery, we're like, well, he may throw in late July. He may throw in late June. He may throw in early July. Well, that's cutting it close to training camp. Well, it, I just want, like, if, as a Niner fan... Just want to move on. I want closure. I just yeah, exactly. I want closure. And I and I also want just all the singularity of the focus on the season now with the guys that are on this team. Whether it be Trey, whether we're talking about Bosa, like I just want to focus on that. And it feels yeah. like this offseason has had all of this smoke with no fire. Debo wants out, and you know, he's Trey ready right. and his Trey's arm and his arm fatigue and Jimmy. And we're talking about everything that isn't football. Yeah. And that's why I'm so excited for tomorrow, because it's an actual football game. And Trey's going to play the first half, according to Kyle Shanahan. But when it comes to Jimmy Garoppolo, <laughs> anything can happen. See it anyway, a backup, backup, backup scenario if someone gets hurt, could he be on this team? I mean, I think any scenario is possible. All right, let's get into Trey Lance. That's what's coming up on sponsored by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. See it anyway, a backup, backup, backup scenario if someone gets hurt. Back, 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 back. Could he be on this team? Way back. I mean, I think any scenario is possible. God.